Good day, everyone, and welcome to our conversation. Our guest today is Dr. Ellie Beerskens, all the way from the Netherlands. She is a staff member at the Presence Foundation, and she is responsible for teaching Presence. Welcome, Ellie. Thank you very much, Amrantia. Would you kindly tell us more about yourself, please? Well, you've told people the most important thing. I work with the um, Presence Foundation, which I enjoy very much. I've been involved with Presence from the late 1990s, when Andres Bayer did his research, and I did part of the research for his book, um, and wrote co-wrote one of the chapters with him. And I was riveted from the very first time that I heard about it. And I read the manuscript. And around that time, something important happened in my life. I fell critically ill. This was 1999. I was in hospital for months. And I was assigned to uh, read the manuscript of the theory of presence and, you know, correct it for typos and everything. And this was a very important time in my life because for the first time I experienced that I had always been very healthy, was vulnerable, and that I suffered. I was in a lot of pain and I was really, really scared. I didn't know what was happening. They didn't know what was wrong with me. And so I experienced firsthand what it's like to be dependent on help, to have to ask for everything. I couldn't speak. My voice had gone because it was all inflamed. So I couldn't even, you know, really ask for things properly, for pain medication or tell them what was wrong. And reading through this manuscript of A Theory of Presence, it was the first time, and I think the only time in my life, that I cried while reading <laughs> scientific research. <laughs> especially where we came to the chapter on suffering and on vulnerability, because it was like Andres was telling my story and it made me understand how important it is that we teach nurses and caregivers and social workers and whatnot, what it is like to be vulnerable, to be on the receiving end of care. And that makes for my passion when doing this work hmm. so well, that's, that's the one yeah. that's that's what i'm what i'm what comes to mind when i think about why why am i so um passionate about presence hmm. it's a very personal and close experience and at the same time an introduction to presence while you were so vulnerable and realizing the importance of that. Yes, because that is what presence um, is all about, about people who are vulnerable. And I used to think, oh, that's, you know, people who are socially margined or who can't keep up with the pace of society, but it's also everybody, we mm. all are vulnerable at, at some point or other in our lives. And it's it's not easy and it's wonderful if you meet people who understand what it is to give care, to give mm -hmm. care in a relational way, in, in a caring way, in a committed way. So it's, it's um, not as easy to do that. It sounds self-evident of course we care of course we do the best we can and we do everybody does the best we can but we can do better if we understand more about who the other person is and what life looks like mm -hmm. from their perspective or what suffering or this handicap or this being old and vulnerable means to me it means different things to different people. Mm -hmm. So Presence talks a lot about the importance of connection and of attunement 
because giving care is a different task for different people. Depends on who mm -hmm. you deal with. Yes. So what I what I love about presence and all the publications that were written about it is the language. <laughs> it's it's given us a new, more complicated, intricate language to help us think about what is good care. Uh, uh, what are the main ingredients, like I said, uh, to be connected, to be attuned, to be close, to be, you know, to, to dare to be close to others, to not leave them, even if you think, well, there's not much else I can do. Mm -hmm. Those are important words and concepts that help us to understand ourselves as well, to understand mm -hmm. what it is that we need to do. And more specifically, to understand what is the good thing, the right thing to do in a moral sense. Because mm. it's, it's, I remember being in hospital and being in a lot of pain. And they'd given me pain medication, like with us, it's called paracetamol, mm -hmm. that you can have like six, six times a day, six doses a day. <clears throat> But I was in so much pain that after the second dose, I was in pain again. And I asked the nurse, could you give me some more? And she said, well, let me see. How much did you have today? Oh, no, you're, you're way past your doses for the day. No, sorry. You'll have to grit your teeth for a little bit longer. I was dumbfounded by the answer because yeah. she did something right. She stuck to the rules. She, mm -hmm. she checked and thought, well, is this all right? Uh, and But her conclusion was, without looking at me, without asking me, how bad is your pain? She concluded, well, no, can't be done. End of story. Sure. And the, the, the overwhelming emotion that I had was of being left alone mm -hmm. to fend for myself. Nobody wanted to help me. And that mm -hmm. was horrible. I mean, even if she'd only had asked, what mm. makes you ask for more? How bad is it? Do you want me to check with the doctor? Things like that. Mm. So presence teaches us to go beyond the rules and beyond routines mm. and always, always ask ourselves, what is going on with this person? What is the matter with her or him? What is at stake for her or him? I was at the end of my wits. Did she know that? Mm. Did she understand that? Even if she'd sure. given me nothing, it would have helped yes. to know that she'd asked. Yeah. So Thank you that, so much. Yes. In that, I think presence is rather radical. Mm. Radical in um, the lengths you go to or the depths you go to or the trouble to take you take to understand more about the other and to think about and knowing that, understanding that, what is the right thing to do mm. in this moment. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing that. It, you give such a, a clear and at the same time such a rich explanation of what presence is. And while you were speaking, I was just having the image of to not let rules and policies and procedures be the end point. That, that is not where we should stop when interacting with a patient, but to go beyond that, as you said, to um, really see the person and ask them to not let the procedures be the barrier or a barrier for care. Yes. And mm -hmm. I really want to stress that procedures and rule have their own place, they are important. Mm. They are, you know, knowledge. They represent knowledge that has been gathered, you know, over decades mm. or maybe hundreds of years. So it's not a call for pushing them aside. Yes. It's a call of a call to apply them sensibly, mm. wisely, mm. informed. Mm. So it's all which of course you, you you will understand that it's 
it is difficult to juggle, you know, one with the other. Mm. The rules, the procedures, which make sense, and understanding what is this woman dealing with at this moment. So which mm. of the rules should I apply to? Where should I bend? Where should I find some room to move yeah. differently than I maybe would? Mm. That is what makes presence, the practice of presence, complicated. It's not easy. Yes, yes. It is indeed not easy, but I also think it's very enriching. Yes, how, how would you, why do you say that? I think, if, I think um, if I really understand the person next to me and how they experience their illness or their needs in that moment, then I can crea be creative in applying the procedure or the rules or... Um, and it, it, I learn from that. And I also feel then enriched if the patient is feeling that they experience good care. That is wonderful. I love the way you put that. Because that is very true. The people we speak to who've learned to practice presence, they all mention this. Everything is, you know, open, new, and I learn every day from my patients about them and about myself mm. that's, that's right. why i love teaching i love yes. teaching presence because it's always right new. It's, it's it's never the same i can imagine yes mm. please tell us more about teaching presence and how you go about doing that and what that is all about yeah, well it's it's of course necessary that people understand a little bit about the concepts and the theory of presence. But uh, certainly in recent years, the accent has been shifted more to applying those insights in practice, because that's where they come alive. Yeah. And I think at the heart of the learning, the perpetual learning process that presence means is inquiry, being inquisitive. And I would, if you don't mind, I would like to elaborate a little bit on that, because what we find is that um, to practice presence, you have to have an open mind and then be open to the perspective of others. But the open mind also means you have to be curious, inquisitive about the other, about the world, about their world and about yourself. And we find uh, the best places to learn about the others and about ourselves in practice, in real life cases, because that is where the whole the complexity of giving care comes together. Mm -hmm. I mean, you work with clients and patients and not one is the same as the other. And every time you have to think, reflect, um, um, watch what is going on, what is uh, important in this situation. So that is what we do when we do inquiry. Um, when you were over in the Netherlands, we gave you a sample of what that is like. Remember you told us about something that happened a long time ago when you were training as a nurse, I think? Yes. And you had this example, I, I can't remember quite precisely, about a man you met a patient in the yes. hospital. And yes. Then mm -hmm. I asked you all these questions about where was this? What did the hospital ward look like? What did that man look like? Where were you? <laughs> were you sitting? Were you standing? Um, what was being said? How did the situation start? And what was the thing that you struggled with? So what it means inquiry is going back to basics and looking at a concrete real life situation and asking, tell me about it. It's like mm. as if you made a small video, you know, in words of that situation. And the reason why that is in itself a good thing is that you take 
yourself as caregiver out of um, your thoughts about the situation mm -hmm. and you have a good look at what did really happen. Mm -hmm. What was it that somebody said? When were you starting to feel uncomfortable or uh, confused or whatever? So it is so important because it slows you down. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, we always have you know, recollections and ideas and thoughts about what happened. And they often, they are very <clears throat> scarce and very, not very accurate. Mm -hmm. So to go back and to be questioned about what happens step by step helps you to understand, oh, all right, this is what happened. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that we did that? Yes, definitely. And it is exactly what I experienced is that I could be an onlooker to that situation and actually be less judgmental of myself in what, how I handled the situation. Yes. yes. Did you, I'm, I'm curious to know, did you find it intimidating in any way that I asked all these questions? Yes, I did in the beginning. It's overwhelming to, to in the beginning, to, to um, stand still. But once I understood what it is about and in what way it helped to me, I actually appreciated it a lot. And I could open up more. That's so interesting that you say that because it requires a lot of trust. Mm. You have to trust, you know, that this is going somewhere. Yes. And I think also we're not used to being questioned. A Definitely, lot. yes. yes. In, in such a, maybe, you know, you'll think, oh, well, what are all these petty questions about? <laughs> about who was sitting where and how were they holding their hands and what was their facial expression? All yes. these details are important if you do inquiry. Yes. And I'm trying to remember, well, I know we came to a point where we got new insights just yes. you know, from asking. Can you remember Definitely. what it was? Yes, it was about when I was a young student and there was an older man from a different culture as I am and he was questioning about his procedure. And um, when I just uh, spoke an honest, very um, humane answer, he decided not to have the procedure. And I felt very guilty about that. And what I realized from our discussion is that I could have asked him more about what was he worried about. And I was focusing on having that exact correct answer for him from the medical point of view. And I didn't have that answer for him. And um, my insight was that I did the best that I could in that moment. And um, um, yes, and that there were several barriers, like he was older than me, um, he was from a different culture, I didn't know how to interpret his question, and it was, it was a very personal um, procedure that he had to undergo. So it was me as a young girl towards an older person, we don't speak about those personal um, procedures normally outside of hospital so i wasn't experienced in talking about that i didn't have all the information to be able to give him so what i could have done is just to consult with another person or um just ask him what how important it is for him what, what does he understand about it but it's it's exactly a very good example of sticking to the procedure and losing him in that way losing uh, a connection with him that is beautiful the way you put that you lose the other you lose the connection if you're mm. stuck in your own what we call your own logic yes your definitely professional logic Yes. So what, what you're explaining is so enlightening because you are telling us how by being questioned and having to ask, answer all these questions, you came to know yourself, your own mind. Yes. And you came to certainly. realize, I did this, which was the best I could do at the moment and the best um, way I could proceed because I didn't know any better because I hadn't asked myself anything else. But by being asked, you yourself realize this and this is what I thought. 
this and that is what was in my way. This and this was the struggle I was experiencing. Mm. Your emotion of guilt was, you know, just like a little alarm bell going, something's not right. Something's yes. happening that I didn't really intend to happen. So we yes. search and we, we probe until we find where is it that your struggle really took place. Mm. And I remember now that we that was really in a very short time, I mean, relatively speaking. Yes. Usually when we have a complicated case, it can take up to two or three hours to to go through it. Okay. And, yes, and get to the point where somebody says, right, I get a new perspective or I get I see new entries and, and ways I could act. But you were a very quick learner, I remember that. <laughs> I don't yeah. think we spent more than an hour or so. No, it wasn't a very long conversation, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But and I, I, I love that about, you know, for me it is, I enjoy that so much, you know, doing this work because I never know where it's going. Mm. And I don't have the solution. You find your solution if there is any. You broaden your horizon. You reflect on what happened. You begin to understand. And all I'm doing is asking open questions. Mm. How did it go? What was it? What did you mean by that word? Like just now, you know, a few minutes ago, you said, I find it very enriching. Yes. If you do inquiring, automatically you go, what do you mean by the word enriching? So yes. It becomes a habit. A I strong. can imagine, yes. And, and um, yes, and you asking that question helped me to understand better and it also helped me feel connected with you. I think that in itself helped me to feel that you're interested in what I'm saying. So I think that that's a very good way to to practice presence and also to learn presence. Oh, that's so interesting that you're saying that because that is what I always hope and think we should do. You cannot preach presence. You have to do presence and mm. teach by example as well as by words. I mean, the words are not unimportant at all because they help our understanding of what is going on but it is you, you can't you know say do as i say but uh, don't do as i do it doesn't work that way yeah definitely but, uh, yeah it, you, you you have to do you have to practice what you preach definitely and that is what what inquiry evokes because mm -hmm. it put me in a in a modest position i hope I mean, I, when I have to confess, when I started teaching, I thought my role was to know it all. Okay. And to tell everybody what I know, which is nonsense, really, <laughs> when you come to think of it. Because I don't know much about, for instance, nursing, apart from my perspective as a patient. Mm. And theory is only as good as the practice that it feeds. So that was very helpful for me to, to be more comfortable with teaching and to honour the knowledge that the persons who come to be taught already have and just to broaden it and enrich it instead yeah. of thinking, well, <laughs> this is it. I have the truth and here <laughs> it is for you to swallow. Oh, wow. Yes. I can imagine that that is quite a switch to go from sharing information to inquiry. Yes, and, and it's not that we're not sharing information. I mean, what has been a great help, maybe I'm going too fast here, is that we, we wrote a new book, a book, The Practice of Presence, where people can find the theory in a language that we hope that they understand that is not as theoretical as the first publication was, the theory of presence, and which makes presence more available to, to 
students, to people who work in the field, work as nurses, as, as caregivers and whatnot. So that gives us more free reign to play with it. They can read the text. We can talk about what they understand and what they don't understand. We can look for examples in their own work, but it comes alive much more that way. Wonderful. Yes, please tell us more about the book and uh, where we can find the book. Yes, shall I? Sure. I don't know whether we can get a good shot. Yes. yes I love the colour, I have to say. <laughs> it's yeah, very it bright orange. Beautiful. Yes. And um, it's Andres and my colleague Maria Ivan de Linda and I worked for a lot of years at it, on it. It was it was a lot of work, but we're very happy with the result. Um, it explains presence in 10 chapters, which are, you know, enriched with little exercises, ref reflective questions. There's even a website attached to it. So if you purchase the book, you get access to the website where you can find more materials. We work a lot with videos so you can find suggestions for videos um, that you can work with and um, we even have a manual for teachers for instance if you teach at a college um, you can work with that you can ask the uh, editor it's all in touch however but yeah. we are working <laughs> on more um, more articles and texts in the english language have you, have, you, have you tried reading it? I never, never know how much you understand of written Dutch. Can you follow yes, it? Like I can, yes, can, definitely. Uh, yes. I'm excited to read more in the book and actually also use it when teaching presence. I hope to start teaching a short course on presence next year. So oh, wow. I, yes, so, yes, I'm very excited about that and also hope to use your book as study material and these videos that we are doing. It's so, so valuable that I would like to invite students to watch the videos and learn from that. Yes, yes. Well, thank you also for, you know, putting up this channel you know, uh, and 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 making presence more widely available and known because you, you're doing a great job we we are, we're learning from you oh wonderful thinking, yes yes we should uh, get into you know making videos as well and putting them up uh, on youtube and whatnot great it's, it's, yeah it's we're stepping into the modern era here Okay. Slowly but surely. Yeah, wonderful. That sounds great. I would really like to view that as well and learn from that. Wonderful. Yes. Thank you so, so very much for our conversation. I appreciate it so much and I, I know it will mean a lot to those who view it. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Amaranta. It was a joy to speak to you again. Thank you. Thank you. Same year. <laughs>